let's talk about this interesting ankle trimal fracture dislocation. So this was a 56 year old female who presented to the emergency department. She said she fell awkwardly while walking her dog, twisted her ankle away from her as she fell to the ground, had immediate pain, swelling, and inability to stand up or put weight on that ankle. On physical exam, she has an obvious deformity. She's immediately deviated with the eversion, neurovascularly intact, and also has mild tenderness at the knee joint. Okay, what we see here are normal radiographs of the ankle for reference. On the left side of the screen is a so-called mortise view, which is roughly a PA view, but obliquely, and then a lateral view. This is our patient's radiographs. On the right side of the screen, you see a fracture of the medial malleolus right here. You see a fracture of the lateral malleolus, which extends into the joint line. Uh, it looks like maybe there's a fragment back here in the back, it's hard to say. And then on the left side of the screen is the lateral view. You see the tibial plafond is in front of the talus now, so that is obviously dislocated. And then, you know, there's a questionable fracture of the posterior aspect of the distal tibia here as well, which is why we might call it a trimal fracture. And the rest of the bones look okay. So let's talk about ankle fractures. Unilateral ankle fracture isolated either the medial or lateral malleolus. Typically the lateral malleolus, as you think of lateral ankle sprains being more common. Um, they can be stable. You do have to stress them in certain cases. There's different types of lat mal fractures uh, to see how stable the ankle joint is. A bimal fracture involves both the medial and lateral malleolus, which is inherently unstable. And then a trimal fracture is the same thing, but now the posterior edge of the tibial plafond is involved in the so-called uh, trimal. And then uh, a maze the new fracture, which can happen with these injuries, is uh, when the force vector goes all the way up the syndosmosis and out the fibular head. And so if you see a maze new fracture, which we will see in this case, uh, it implies disruption of the syndosmosis as well. Patient's mechanisms can be pretty benign, such as stepping off a curb or a stair. Obviously our patient, she was just walking her dog and she got pulled in the wrong direction. Risk factors include ligamentous laxity, weak perineal muscles, history of ankle sprain, obesity, older age. Patients will report pain, swelling, trouble ambulating, and oftentimes a deformity. And then on an exam, you'll see the soft tissue swelling is usually pretty obvious if there's a fracture, some bruising, sometimes skin tenting. They can be open fractures. Deformity is typically obvious, and you need to perform a thorough neurovascular exam. Radiographs are your initial imaging modality of choice. These are typically sufficient. Uh, they may miss subtle fracture patterns. They can miss the posterior, posterior tibial plafond. You obviously want to get post-reduction films after you reduce. Uh, CT is better to characterize bone, but not always necessary. MRI also not necessary, but can be used to characterize soft tissue injuries if they are suspected. Management uh, in the acute setting, you know, stable ankle fractures can essentially be immobilized with a cam boot versus a splint. These typically have to be isolated malleolar fractures. Uh, there's certain criteria you have to meet to be considered stable such as you have to be a one-part fracture, it can't gap or open up on stress views. Unstable fractures and dislocated fractures require more intervention. They have to be reduced and splinted. All unstable fractures are surgical, essentially. Uh, there are a few exceptions, but that's basically for people who are poor surgical candidates or unable to participate in rehab or elderly or non-ambulatory. So essentially all of the unstable fractures require surgery. Here's our patient after she was reduced. You can see the difference. So you see the silhouette of the plaster around the patient. There's a three-sided plaster here. So she's in a posterior short leg as well as a stirrup splint. So she's got three-sided mobilization. The joint has been reduced, right? You can now see the distal tibia is sitting over the talus and you can see these fractures are a little bit better anatomic alignment now. There's a mixed long-term prognosis, even with Proper management, patients uh, will report good outcomes, but can eventually develop arthrosis. If you require surgery or you're dislocated, you have worse outcomes, that's not really a surprise. Complications is typically post-traumatic ankle arthritis, you know, pain, stiffness, loss of function. And a lot of patients will experience this. Um, other complications include hardware loosening, malunion, articular malreduction, loose bodies, and infection. In the case of our patient, she went to the OR uh, she was discharged from the ED initially, 
and the initial diagnosis of trimal was incorrect. She actually just had a bimal. She went to the OR on day nine after her injury and was recovering well on her last visit. This radiograph shows a plate along the distal fibula and then a through fixation of the medial malleolus. And you can note there's no other hardware on the distal pallus, so there was no trimal fracture when they got into the operating room. So three key points on really bimal and trimal fractures. Fairly common manifestation of ankle fractures. They are always unstable and always require surgery. They can occur from a fairly benign mechanism and are diagnosed on standard radiographs of the ankle and prognosis is mixed and many patients will go on to develop post-traumatic ankle arthritis even with optimal management.